All right, so in your folder, you should have some papers. So go ahead and get those out. Some of you may see that you have some city printmaking projects that you haven't taken home last time or that somebody might have been gone. So make sure that when you get your city printmaking projects, those go by your backpacks or in your backpacks or however. You don't need your skies yet. You don't need the skies yet. You can put the skies back. What you are going to need is your painted paper. So go ahead and get out, get out. And if you were not here last time, don't worry. We made a painted paper for you. So everyone should have a painted paper in their team folder. Now I'm going to show you what the final project is going to kind of look like, all right? And you can see another one of them up on my uh, cabinet there. So we see a couple of objects here. We see a big planet that we see sort of part of a planet. Can you see how it's sort of going off the edge of the paper there? And then we also have some two other little planets in the background. We also have, what's this? A rocket, yeah, pretty cool. Now, I know my six-year-old would tell me that that looks nothing like a real rocket mom because, like, the Apollo 11 and the, you know, all the, he's a space nut, so he would probably tell me my rocket doesn't look very realistic, but you can, you can modify your rocket to make it look like however you like. At your table, you will find a couple of different things that we're going to use. This is a planet template. Which planet do you think this is going to be? The one in the corner. The one in the corner. And you know what? That does kind of look like it could be a sun, doesn't it? Or I'm, I'm sure my son would probably say that it looks like Venus because Venus is supposed to be really hot. So um, you could have it be a sun. You could have it be whatever. You're going to basically take a pencil from your um, pencil bin at your table and you're going to either direction, it doesn't matter how you hold this template onto your um, paper, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pick a, I'm just going to pick a corner because I like to be able to line it up on the corner like that. Or maybe I'll go like, maybe I'll do it up here I suppose because that just seems kind of fun to me. Now whatever corner you decide to put your planet on, that's the corner that it's going to be on in your art piece as well. So I'm going to hold my template down and trace so I see a pencil line. And when I remove the template, that tells me where my planet's going to be. Kind of cool. And I'll let you guys work on that. Yep, so one, it doesn't matter if there's stuff on the template. These templates have been used by a lot of different classes. They're just templates. They're not going to be part of your artwork. We're just using them to trace. They're mostly made of scraps. Yep, trace it onto your, wherever you want that planet to look like. Whatever part of your painted paper looks like it'd make a good planet. Put it there. The only place you don't want to do it on is wherever is gray, okay? Because you're going to want to save your gray probably for your rocket. So anywhere that's gray, you're going to want to save that for your rocket. But anything else is fair game to make your planet out of. Okay.
Right. Now you'll also notice at your table in your blue basket, there is a little plastic bag of circles. Now there's a lot of different sizes of circles in this bag. We are going to use two smallish ones. So as soon as you're done with your, um, your planet that's peaking, your peaking planet that has a corner, you can choose two smaller templates. You guys have some even smaller ones than I do. You might have little jar lids. That'd be kind of perfect. Um, you're going to pick two other places that you feel like might make a great planet. For this one, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one on this purple thing here. Because I think that would make a neat purple stripey planet. I'm going to trace that one there. And I'm going to trace this one on my, this greenish blue. Because I think that one kind of reminds me of Earth. And you guys can all take turns with the templates. You might want one that is small and one that's sort of medium. I wouldn't use any of the really big ones in your bag, like the CDs or the giant yogurt lids. I wouldn't use those for this because you already have a pretty big planet. In fact, it's so big it doesn't even fit on your paper, right? Because it's sort of halfway coming up. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to want to trace after you do your big planet with the corner and then your two smaller planets like your medium and your little one there is this template here also in your blue basket. This is going to be the Rocket, you guys are a smart crew. So I'm gonna place this on my gray, somewhere in my neutrals, you know. I've got, I think I've got enough gray to do the rocket right like this. Remember to hold it down really securely and trace with your pencil. Now don't worry, we're gonna have some really colorful accents on our rocket. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh, a gray rocket, that's kind of boring. Well, don't worry, we are going to add some fun details so your rocket is not gonna be all gray, all right? But the main body, or I believe what they call the fuselage, is going to be gray. How many of you are gonna go home today and start looking up stuff about planets and space for your science today? Anyone gonna do that? <laughs> Sounds fun, doesn't it? Okay, you guys go ahead and place your templates. And whenever you're done with a template, if you could make sure that it gets back into the basket or the bag or wherever it came from, that would be a really good idea. I don't have a whole lot of templates, and every year it seems like I lose a couple and I have to make new ones. So if you guys can make sure that templates go back in the basket or in the little bag, like the circle templates can go back in the little bag, that would be great. Only the circle templates go back in the bag, though. The rocket and the big half a planet templates, those go in the basket, okay? All right. Now, the next step 
I'm gonna show you this template. This is very special. What part of the rocket is this? A wing. A wing or a fin, mm-hmm. Now, what number do you see here? Four. What number do you see here? Two. That's right. You're gonna need two of these because you are going to use this to trace a fin with once with the one facing up. Then you're gonna trace another fin with the two facing up, okay? I'm going to make my fins of my rocket both kind of my purplish color over here. Well, maybe I'll make it blue. So this first time I take my template, I'm gonna trace it with the one facing up. It's very important because your rocket will not fly right if you have two fins that you traced with the one facing up or two fins with, that you traced with the two facing up. You need one fin that you traced with one facing up, then you're gonna flip your template like a pancake and you're going to trace the other side as well somewhere else. Something I hope you're noticing is that nowhere on my painted paper do I have a place where my templates are crossing each other, you know, because these all need to be cut out separately. So if your templates are, if your designs are all crisscrossing each other, then you're gonna have chunks missing out of your objects. That would not be very fun. So when we're done tracing, what you should have is a planet that is so big that it doesn't fit on the paper, so it's got a corner on it. Should have a medium planet and a smaller planet, a rocket fuselage, and two fins. One that you traced with the one facing up and one that you traced with the two facing up. All right, give me a zero in the air when you have all of your templates traced. Excellent, okay. Next, you're going to take from your coat on your table a pair of scissors. Now I'm gonna have you repeat after me. Ahem. Ooh, only, I only had one ahem after that. We haven't done that in a while. Let's try again. Ahem. I am going to Carefully cut out my big planet. Ooh, some of you guys even changed your voice to match mine. That's super fun. Okay, let's go ahead and carefully cut on our line for the big planet. It's just going to be one big curve. We are only going to cut out our planet at this time, our big planet. We're not gonna cut out any of our other objects because you can imagine if we had all of our objects all cut out and flying around in space all at the same time, that would be a little crazy. So we're just gonna cut out one at a time. One at a time. Now I'm gonna have, I'm gonna start placing my planet uh, on my black background and you tell me when I put it in the right place or if I put it in the wrong place. If I put it in the wrong place, I need you to give me a big eh, okay? So if I put it in the wrong place, you need to do that. And then if I put it in the right place, you need to go <sighs> okay? So let's try it, let's see, where does my planet go? Uh, how about here? Oh, oh yeah, that's not right. No, that, that can't be right. Uh, well, what about here? Oh, oh my goodness, you guys are hmm, pretty pretty tough critics here. What about, what about here? Oh my goodness, it doesn't go there? Oh no, oh, what am I gonna do? How about? How about like this? Oh, that looks like a shark fin. Yeah, I can't do that. Um, well, what about here? Oh, okay. I heard some of you guys were still doing the but this is actually correct. How do I know that it's correct? 
because I have one flat side running against one of my flat edges and the other flat side going against one of the other flat edges of my black paper. Now, your planet might not go in the lower left-hand corner. Yours might go in the lower right-hand corner, however you want to do it. As long as you have a flat side and a flat side lining up together and your planet is not just like floating in the middle of your, you know, like somebody took a chunk of planet out of a planet and put it in the middle of space. So once you know where your planet is going to go, you're going to do a little flippy flip and you're going to take your glue also from your tote and start gluing your planet down. You don't want too much glue, but a little border around the edge and some squiggles in the middle should be enough. Now I will tell you that you're going to have to snuggle this planet onto your paper for quite some time. You know how sometimes you have to have a nice long bedtime story and a nice long snuggle before you go to sleep? Same with this planet here, because it is sometimes a little stubborn. So you kind of have to hold it down and you might have to quietly count inside your brain to 30 or something. That looks like plenty of glue, Braxton. You're good. Yep. So think of it like you're quietly reading your planet a bedtime story and saying, it's okay. You're going to be okay, planet. You can stick to the paper. You might have to hold it down because this is some thick, paper that we've added paint to so it was already thick to begin with then we added paint and then it got even thicker and we're trying to glue it to construction paper and so they're, they're going to need some convincing to want to stick together yeah double check make sure you're gluing your planet down not the template okay that would not that would not be fun there we go. I held that down really nicely and now it's sticking pretty well. So you might have to be patient. If your planet is like mine and it is all tucked in bed safe and sound and is nice and cozy and doesn't need another bedtime story, then you may start cutting out your next largest planet. I'm going to start cutting out the one that looks like Earth. Cutting it so carefully because we want these planets to look nice and round not like they got half of their sides taken off by a comet or something or an asteroid now this is kind of clever if you have a spot on your sky background that you feel like didn't get enough stars on it, or maybe got a little too many stars on it, if you know what I mean, got a little smeary, you can always hide that with a planet if you want. I think I'm gonna hide this spot over here that just looks awfully blank. <laughs> just looks kinda lonely. I don't think I had enough time to put as many stars on there as I wanted. Yeah, and some of you guys might have had like a splotch on your Sky where some of the paint just decided to go kablooey on you, so that would be a great place to cover up with a planet too if you want. Just gonna hold that planet down nice and snuggly. Read it a bedtime story in my head. Help it to count sheep. Whatever you have to do to get it to stay nice and cozy on your paper.
hopefully your little round planet will stick down better than your, your big half a planet did. And when you're done with your medium-sized planet, you can cut out your little planet. I'm gonna cut out my purple, my purple planet, my purple stripy planet. Same thing with this one. I'm just gonna find out. I don't think I'm gonna put it like right next to my other planet. See how this looks kind of goofy? Just to have them sitting right next to each other. It looks a little bit more dynamic if this is a little bit farther away and down or just a little bit angled differently. You could even sort of have it overlapping your planet if you want to. Don't make like a bullseye. That looks really strange. Don't do that. But we want to arrange it nicely so it looks a little different. You can kind of play around with it, decide where you think, and then think also to yourself, where do I want my rocket to be? You can think where you want your rocket to be and let that help influence where you put your planet. Remember to hold that planet down nice and firmly. Maybe my red planet is Mars. Maybe that could be Mars. Does anybody know any of the names of any of the Mars rovers? Anybody know any of them? Ooh, Curiosity is one, yep. Good, we got some we got some space friends here today. Anybody know any other rover names or any of the names of moon landers or Ooh, anybody know the name of the telescope they just launched recently? Anybody heard about the new telescope they just launched? You heard about that? It's called the James Webb Telescope. It's bigger than any other telescope they've put in space so far. It's huge. Hmm? Oh yeah? Yeah, it is really, it's a very cool telescope that they just launched. Okay. All right, next we have your rocket. Go ahead and start cutting out your rocket. It's interesting. You're going to want to decide which direction your rocket is going, where you want it to be. I wouldn't put it right at the edge of something, right? Because what's wrong with this right here? What am I not going to be able to add? The fire, yeah. We got to have the, uh, the stuff coming from the engines, right? They've got their, their engines firing. So we have to be able to see the engines firing. You could have it like look like it's almost launching from the big planet if you want. You could look like it's just flying through space. You could have it look like it's going towards your other planet, however you like.
kind of experiment for a while. Figure out where you think it's going to look best. And once you decide where you want it to go, then you can start gluing it down. Here's another space fact for you. Does anyone know what they put in rockets to make them go? Mmm, close to jet fuel. It is rocket fuel. Certainly not gasoline. You think you can fill up a rocket at the gas station the same way you do with your, with your minivan? That's not going to work, is it? They actually use liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to fuel rockets. Pretty cool stuff. We're learning about space today. Give me a zero in the air when your rocket is down. Okay, I see some zeros. We got rockets. We got rockets flying. Okay, once your rocket is down, then you can start cutting out your fins. And the fins are a little bit tricky because we know that they have to go onto the rocket somehow. And it does look funny on the rocket if they're not put in the right place. So I'm going to cut out both of my fins at the same time. And then I'll glue them down at the same time, actually. So far, my scrap is still all in one piece. I like that. That way I can keep track of it. Because we're not going to throw this scrap away. Even after we cut out all of our pieces, we're still going to need to use our scrap for some of our details that we're gonna put on the rocket, like the fire. That's gonna be really cool. Okay. Now, here's my fins. I'm gonna show you where the fins are on this rocket. You see where my fins are on this rocket? If I put them way down here, this is going to be a problem because when the rocket sits on the ground, the fins would touch the ground, but the, the bottom of the rocket wouldn't. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to put them all the way back here. That's not right. We're also not going to put them way up here where they're looking like silly ears, right? We don't want them up way up there. That wouldn't be able to fly straight, would it? So we're going to kind of put it almost at the bottom, but not quite. We're going to leave some space. You see that little space back there? It's about as wide as a finger or two. I'm going to put it kind of like that. So that's about where we want our rocket fins. Ooh, I almost glued my fin on backwards. Now the curved part of that fin, the long curve, is the part that goes right against the body of the rocket. Right there. Yep, and that little curve is the part that goes behind. Well, I want to make sure we're gluing them on right, right? What was that? Wow. That's exciting. Okay. Now, once you have all your main pieces glued down, you're going to want to take a little check and look at everything. Make sure all your corners and edges are glued down nicely and sticking down well. If they are sort of peeling up a little bit, you're going to want to take care of that. Slide a little glue underneath and make sure it's sticking down nicely. 
It's important that all of your everything is sticking down firmly to your paper. Otherwise, when we try to put it on the drying rack, the little bars on the drying rack are going to catch on anything that's lifting up a little bit. So you're going to want to, you know, think of it like if you have a rug in your house and one of the corners is kind of lifted up a little bit, everyone would trip on it, wouldn't they? So you want to make sure that all of the corners of everything are sticking down really nicely so none of them get stuck on the bars of the drying rack when we try to put it in the drying rack today. Is this worse? Does it matter if there's extra glue oozing out? Will it dry okay? It'll dry clear as long as it is, you know, you, it's, as long as it doesn't look like too much mayo on a sandwich squishing out, you know. Try to it up a little bit. Maybe a smidge. I've been trying to wipe some there. <laughs> yeah. You don't need a lot of glue. It's not so much the amount of glue that matters. It's more about how well you hold it down and how well you spread out the glue. sure everything is sticking down really well because we don't want anything to get stuck on the drying rack. today. This is rather unprecedented. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to talk about some of our other rocket parts here. Our rocket's looking pretty plain. On my rocket, what are some of the details that I have? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Got windows and a fire. I even have a nozzle here. This is called a nozzle. That's where the, all the fuel gets mixed together and comes out the other end, which, in, which gives the force to give the rocket to get to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some circles. And if you have little tiny circles that you want to use in your circle template bag, you can. Otherwise, if you want to draw your own circles, that's fine, or if you want to draw squares for your rocket's windows, that's fine too. I'm going to make uh, my rockets, there, you're gonna have two circles per window. So I'm gonna have one of my circles be kind of yellow colored, and then I'm gonna have an inner window that's sort of blue or purple or something like that. one circle, I'm actually using that circle as a template to cut out the other one, because why not? If I want them to be the same size, I might as well use my first one as a template to cut out my second one. 
unless of course you're using one of the circle templates in your bag. Not everyone has little tiny circle templates in their bag and that's okay. You guys are probably pretty good at drawing circles at this point. There we go. So I've got two little yellow windows, but I want the inside of my windows to look like glass. So that's where I'm going to use that kind of bluish purple color. So it kind of looks like glass, that's just me. So I'm looking at my circles and I need to make sure that I make a circle that's smaller than the outer circle, right? So I'm just gonna kind of make one up. Kind of like that. I know that's going to be smaller. So I'm going to use that for my other circle. Now, once my windows are cut out, then I can start gluing them down. I'm gonna glue the big circle down first. I'll glue the little circle on top. They don't need a ton of glue. You need a thin coating of glue spread out nice and evenly. We're gonna do a thin coating of glue, spread out pretty well, just to keep those windows down. I have pretty small windows on my rocket. Yours might be bigger, that's fine. Okay. All right, my dears. The next thing I'm going to draw is a little shape that's gonna go on the back end of my rocket. That's going to be something called the nozzle. I'm just going to make that by cutting a little rectangle from somewhere that I think would be a good color for the nozzle. I'm gonna choose brown because I have some brown and I haven't used it yet. Now, right now it's a rectangle that's about the same width as the back side of my rocket. But I actually need to turn this into what is called a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a shape that has two parallel sides, but that the other two sides are not parallel. Instead, they sort of slant towards each other. So I'm gonna sort of cut a little angle line here. Can you guys see what my scissors are doing? Maybe I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little better. Here's what my scissors are doing. I'm cutting an angle line on one side and I'm gonna 
turn it around and cut an angle line on the other side. Now I have this shape, which is almost the same color as my skin, so I'll put it against the black paper so you can see better. That is a trapezoid. And if you've never cut a trapezoid before, well, today is going to be your day. That's where my trapezoid is going to go at the back of my rocket. That is the nozzle, the rocket nozzle, the fuel nozzle. Or and there might actually be a different name for it, but that's the name that I know for it anyway. And I'm sure my six-year-old would correct me if he was here because he is my rocket expert. So remember, to make your trapezoid, you start by making a thin rectangle, a skinny rectangle, and then cutting off two sides of it. And then I'll draw a picture of what I want you to do on my board over here so you can see. So step one for making a trapezoid is a skinny rectangle. And then you want to cut on these dotted lines right here. So you cut a rectangle first, and then you cut two angled dotted lines. So you have one side of your trapezoid is shorter, and then one side of your trapezoid is longer. And two angle lines. That's how you make the nozzle. Now this is where we're probably going to end it for today because we don't have quite enough time to do the cool flames or any of the other details that we're going to do. But what I am going to make sure of is two things. First thing I want to make sure of is that I can clearly see the name on the back of my black paper. Some of you guys actually put your name on the front of your black paper and you may have actually covered it with a planet. So make sure that you can clearly see your name on the back of your black paper, especially if you were absent last time and you didn't actually make your, your painted paper or your black paper, please make sure that your name is on the back. Also, we are still going to be using this big painted paper scrap next time. Right now, I can barely see my name on the back of mine, and who knows, you may have actually cut out your name on the back of your scrap. It may be on the back of one of your planets. Yeah, you cut off half of your name. What I want you to do is clearly write your name somewhere on the back of your scrap, on the back of your big Swiss cheese, painted paper Swiss cheese here. I want you to write that nice and clearly on the back and put it neatly into your team folder. Now the, the, the term neatly is very important. The scrap is going to go in your team folder, but be very careful. Don't slide them in. Lay them in gently on top of each other in your team folder so they don't get crumpled in with each other, okay? Your team 